Hello fellow YouTube friends, followers, foods and flabbergasters, my name is Maisel and it's time for another Guild Wars 2 easy and flexible build guide. The goal of this guide is to enable you as much flexibility and low switching costs between PvE game modes on a particular class and elite specialization. This means that whenever possible I will use only one set of gear with slight alterations. To accomplish that goal I suggest gear that allows for high damage and the necessary defense slash support is accommodated for through traits, food and skill changes only. Today's class is the Engineer and the elite specialization is the Scrapper. We're going to talk about three different build variants, an open world roaming build, a power DPS build and a quickness DPS variant. The situation of the Scrapper is highly survivable even in glass cannon gear. It also has great support capabilities because it provides quickness and permanent super speed for your subgroup. As is common for engineers, it's very flexible as well because you can use kits and tool belt skills to customize your build. And now that the rifle was buffed, you can make this arranged build with very few changes. As a downside, you could say that the build doesn't have the highest damage and burst potential with only 34k on the golem, and it also relies on external stability to provide its maximum damage. Before we dive into the skills, let's look at the basic mechanics of the Scrapper specialization. At the first glance, Scrapper looks like an old car. Very slow, and you expect it to fall apart very soon. But the old car, in this case, is much faster and more durable than you would expect. On Engineer in general, you can't weapon swap in combat, so you need to rely on kits if you want additional options. Each utility skill on Engineer comes with a particular tool belt skill as well, so we need to look at them in pairs. On Scrapper, you gain access to the Hammer as a weapon and Gyro skills. The tool belt skill 5 is always replaced by the Function Gyro, while the others are utility options you can freely swap in and out. Aside from the Function Gyro, all Gyros create AoEs that move with you and provide benefits or deal damage inside of the respective AoE. This feels great to play in any game mode and makes you a moving powerhouse. With the trait synergies on Scrapper, the gyros and toolbot skills will grant the subgroup permanent super speed and quickness if you want to, which is one of the main advantages of having a Scrapper in a group because it's actually hard to come by. On many raid fights, fast movement is very helpful to do mechanics. Scrapper is very straightforward to play and generally fairly resilient even in DPS gear due to the trait Impact Savant, which converts 5% of your outgoing damage into barrier. Especially in group scenarios where your damage goes up noticeably, this can make you pretty much unkillable, making Scrapper a very good option for beginners. So if you want to provide pretty good damage, good support and have a more relaxed and forgiving experience, Scrapper is a good elite specialization for you. Scrapper is also able to tank with pretty much full DPS gear on many encounters. Alright, let's dive into skills, starting with the hammer skills. Hammer is the standard go-to weapon, but rifle has become a very good ranged option that you can put on the second weapon slot for fights that are easier with a ranged weapon. Using rifle will cost you some DPS, but it's very straightforward to use. It also gives you the flexibility to swap to rifle mechanism for an even better ranged damage build without having to invest into additional gear. The auto attack chain on hammer is pretty strong, and it applies might to you and vulnerability to the enemy. The hammer auto attack chain doubles in damage from the first hit to the last, so you should try to finish them as much as possible. It's not that big deal if you don't, so this is not a top priority. The next skill, Electro Whirl, is the top contributor to your damage aside from the final auto attack skill, which is why it is your main priority for damage. It reflects missiles as well, which can be handy versus enemies that attack from range. Rocket Charge is hammer skill number 3. This is not part of the regular DPS rotation, but it is very handy for CC purposes and is a 1 second evade as well, so you can use this to avoid dangerous attacks. You have access to a bunch of lightning combo fields, and activating this inside of one applies 2 dazes, which is pretty damn good. Skill number 4 is Shock Shield. This is also not part of your main rotation, but it is a very strong block and barrier generation skill. You can use this to avoid dangerous mechanics, especially when you're tanking stuff. Finally, Thunderclap is a stationary AoE damage skill that also stuns target at the first hit. This is a lightning combo field, so you can use Rock and Charge inside of it to apply additional CC whenever it is required. The rifle skills, as a secondary weapon, are pretty straightforward and Rifle Scrapper is so much fun in open world. It's very similar to Rifle Mechanist, but the super speed and permanent quickness makes it more enjoyable in most open world content in my opinion, even though it does a bit less damage. Essentially, you can just use Rifle Auto Attacks 2 and 5 for damage. In case you don't want to go into melee, skip Rifle 5. Rifle 3 and 4 are CC skills, so save them for break bars. Other than that, the playstyle is the same as on Hammer, but it's much simpler to execute well because you have such a high range on most skills. Just be aware that some skills are melee, like a gyros and spare capacity. Moving on to the utility and tool belt skills. First off, we're not using grenade kit in this scrapper build. 
Using it increases the DPS of the build by around 1 to 1.5k, but that forces you to swap to grenade kit every 5 seconds to use a shrapnel grenade, which can be pretty annoying. So this iteration is more laid back than the benchmark build. As the heal skill, you can choose either AED or Medic Gyro. Medic Gyro is a very nice tool for additional super speed and quickness in the support build. The tool belt skill also puts water combo field down that you can use to heal allies or yourself, depending on the finisher you apply. It also pulses protection around you, which is always good to have. AED can be used to bypass lethal mechanics since it will negate the effect of any damage that puts you into down state and then heals you for a larger amount. Its tool belt skill, Static Shock, is another source of CC through a stun and grants yourself super speed. Instead of Grenade Kit, we're using Blast Gyro. Since its recent rework, it now damages and after a short delay, stuns enemies instead of knocking them back. It also blasts its own fire field, granting might to nearby allies. This is pretty neat as it increases the passive support capabilities of the build as well as the CC potential even further. It'll also trigger the super speed trait Gyroscopic Acceleration. Gyroscopic Acceleration makes you apply super speed to your subgroup whenever you cast a well, or gyro in that case. Paired with Object in Motion that also boosts your damage. Object in Motion gives 5% damage while you have super speed, swiftness and stability and it stacks for each of those boons to a maximum of 15%. In the Quickness build, granting super speed also makes you grant quickness with the trait Kinetic Accelerators. This is the main trait combination used by the Quickness variant. The tool belt skill of the gyro, Bypass Coating, does not have a cast time, so you can use it during other skill casts. It's a stun break that also applies super speed to allies. Next up we have the Shredder Gyro. This is a very strong AoE damage skill that's also a world finish. Use this on cooldown, it's very powerful. It also comes with a very nice tool belt skill spare capacitor. This is yet another daze in the lightning combo field. Since we're not using this in the main rotation, you can save this and use it combined with rocket charge for triple daze combo. The final utility skill is Rifle Turret. This can be placed anywhere it'll shoot enemies. This is a very good passive source of damage, even though it's not the highest damage on its own. The largest part of its damage comes from the toolbar skill Surprise Shot. This damages enemies without a cast time, meaning that you can just press this whenever it comes off cooldown for free damage. As the lead skill, I usually run either Supply Crate or Mortar Kit. Mortar Kit gives you some additional utility and range damage. It's better to use Rifle or Grenade Kit if you intend to damage from range though. Supply Crate drops a random set of turrets for 60 seconds that do some neat things for you. It is also, what a surprise, another stun. Last but not least we have the Function Gyro as another fixed skill. This is a well skill that opposed to the rest of the gyros does not move with you, but is a stationary AoE. This does several things. It's another lightning field, damages enemies and revives downed allies in its radius. This makes it a good emergency skill for dangerous situations. You can also revive yourself with it, but that requires very good timing. Note that its recharge is increased for every ally you revive, so keep that in mind. Now that we got the skill loadout covered, let's move on to gear. In this build we're using full berserk on the DPS build and we're only changing to a diviner hammer for the quickness build in group content. If you can't afford the additional hammer, just go with concentration food and the concentration maintenance oil. There's really no need to change to anything else gear-wise. Additional survivability and support can be reached through traits and food changes or by swapping to rifle. The rune on the armor is Scholar. Scrapper is a very good specialization to maintain the Scholar rune buff, since you have a good chunk of berry up most of the time due to the trait impacts of arm. Sigils on the weapons are always force and impact. Food and utility items are the standard items for power builds, so power and ferocity food paired with a potent superior sharpening stone. If you can afford it, you can also run a writ of masterful strength, since Scrapper also has an easier time maintaining that, just like the Scholar rune. Moving on to traits and specializations. The quickness and power DPS versions of this build run the same specializations with a few different traits, while the open world version exchanges firearms for tools. Let's start with explosives. This is the bread and butter specialization, never change this. With these traits, you deal increased damage while at high health, you shoot missiles and orbital strikes at foes every once in a while, you deal more damage per vulnerability stack on the target, and more damage to foes at a lower health percent. Plus you also heal yourself a little bit whenever an explosion hits an enemy. With explosives, the first hit when entering combat also includes an explosion and refreshes on every dodge roll. That isn't a big deal in group content, but in open world that is pretty nice. If you want permanent fury coverage on yourself in open world, you can use short fuse instead of glass cannon. For more survivability, you can also run blast shield for additional vitality and bury at the cost of some DPS. Next up we have firearms, which we only use on the power DPS variant. Like explosives, firearms also increases your damage noticeably. It gives you 15% more critical chance against bleeding foes, and another 15% crit chance against foes within a range threshold of 450. 
It also increases your damage by 2% for every condition on a foe. So the damage gained from firearms, in particular modified ammunition, scales heavily with the amount of Contis on the enemy. And in solo applications, you simply don't apply that many. You apply some vulnerability and some bleeding with firearms. In group content, you have other people applying Contis to the enemy, so it becomes much more powerful. This is the reason why we're going to run tools in open world. Tools is a very nice specialization for a good trade-off between damage and additional utility for solo gameplay, and it pairs very well with rifle as well. It grants you vigor on using a tool belt skill, reduces the recharge on tool belt skills, makes you deal 10% more damage while you have vigor, and further grants you quickness and super speed every 5 tool belt skills. I found tools to be the best overall choice when running around an open world for both rifle and hammer. If you really want more survivability, you can also run alchemy but it's usually not needed when you go for rifle since you can avoid most damage by staying at range and positioning yourself as needed. Finally, we got the elite specialization scrapper, of course. The first two trade choices are always the same, but the grandmaster trade choice depends on the build variants. With these trade choices, your gyros will apply super speed to allies around you in a larger radius, and you deal up to 15% more damage for having super speed, swiftness and stability on you. The main reason why scrapper is so tanky, in particular in group content, is impact savant. As I mentioned before, this converts 5% of your damage into barrier, so the more damage you deal, the more potent this is. It got nerfed quite hard earlier this year, but it's still very good. In the power DPS variant, we'll run Applied Force. This makes Might apply more power to you and grants you around 3 seconds of stability every 10 seconds, which is very nice to have. In the Open World and Quickness variant, we'll run Kinetic Accelerators, which brings me to how to supply quickness. Kinetic Accelerators grants you increased concentration and makes you apply quickness to every ally including yourself that you apply super speed to. Since you have an abundance of skills that apply super speed, this allows you to cover quickness on yourself and your subgroup very easily. The rotation also doesn't change much compared to the DPS rotation, so there's no real need to talk about it here. You can essentially put as many gyros on your bar as you deem necessary. The Blast Gyro and Shredder Gyro should always be on your bar, but you can add the Purge Gyro and Bulwark Gyro whenever it is advantageous to do so. The Purge Gyro cleanses conditions and gives you a poison field on the tool belt skill, so it can be good on fights with Condi Bombs, Soulless Horror or Slothazor for example. The Bulwark Gyro tool belt skill applies 3 stacks of stability to your subgroup, which is very nice to have to ignore mechanics. You can also use it to redirect damage from your subgroup to you, but you need to be careful with this to not kill yourself. For the Quickness rotation, it is essential to cast all the Gyros on cooldown to maintain quickness on your allies. As I also mentioned earlier, you can also tank on a scrapper very easily. On Hammer you have access to a short cooldown evade and block, and using AED as the heal skill allows you to ignore dangerous mechanics every once in a while. A scrapper tank does respectable DPS with a downside being a lower amount of boon support, like a lack of Aegis and Fury and lower might, compared to a Firebrand or Mechanist tank. If you want more survivability as a tank, you can use Alchemy. For fights that have toughness-based tanking, just change a few pieces to Knight's Armor and or swap the food item. That's it, it's pretty simple. Finally, let's talk about the Scrapper damage rotation in more detail. Before you start, make sure to only apply 10 conditions, including 25 stacks of vulnerability to the Golem. Do not apply all conditions, otherwise your benchmark will be skewed compared to the Snowcrow's benchmark. The concept of rotation is very simple, because it is priority based and this iteration does not require it with Rob to Grenade Kit, so it's even simpler. The main priorities are Electro Whirl, Thunderclap, Blast Gyro, Shredder Gyro and the Function Gyro. Just fill in the gaps between these skills with auto attacks. Surprise Shot should always be used on cooldown. You can save Bypass Coating to break a stun on you, but it's usually not needed. Since it helps maintain super speed, I usually cast this on cooldown as well. I also use the Medic Gyro here for easy uptime and super speed compared to AED. I only use it when I see that super speed is about to expire since it doesn't deal any damage. The passive benefit of doing that is that you also heal your allies and supply a water field for others to combo with. In case you need to block something, just use Static Shock. For CC, you have a good amount built into the rotation with Thunderclap and the Blast Gyro. I always save spare capacitor and rocket charge to be able to supply CC on demand. You can also use AED for another CC skill in the tool belt that you can save. This is basically all you need to know for the scrapper rotation. It's very simple and quite powerful. Your groupmates will love the access to super speed and I think that having a scrapper is definitely worth it for most groups, especially for raid trainings. That's it for today. Feel free to like and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. I hope this video was insightful for you and made you want to try scrapper. See you next time and happy meowing around.